After completing his graduation, Koyomi Araragi wakes up one morning with a strange sensation. Recalling the scolding from his sisters the previous night, he realizes that he's no longer a third-year student at the prestigious Naetsu High School. This departure feels unlike his previous graduations. This time, he faces a mysterious future. The path ahead is shrouded in uncertainty as he awaits responses from the colleges he applied to. This uncertainty leaves him feeling like he's encountering a completely new version of himself. He wonders about the person he will become without clear answers. This state of ambiguity is an experience he hasn't faced before. Lost in thought, he finds himself in the bathroom, contemplating as he washes his face. At this moment, something strange and inexplicable occurs. While gazing into the mirror, he notices his reflection staring back at him, despite his attempt to lower his face, initially dismissing it as a possible hallucination. He steps away from the mirror. However, much to his surprise, the phenomenon persists. Every time he looks into the mirror, his reflection appears to be fixedly staring at him. Fueled by curiosity, he reaches out to touch the mirror, only to find his hand passing right through it. The entire mirror suddenly turns a shade of purple and begins pulling him inside. A bewildered Koyomi struggles against this force, but he soon loses consciousness due to an unknown reason. When he eventually comes to, he finds himself still in the same bathroom. Puzzled by this turn of events, he stands up and peers into the mirror once more, only to see that it's functioning normally again. Yet, he wonders if he might be somewhat half asleep and attempts to splash water on his face, but the sensation of hot water startles him. Despite this, he ultimately reassures himself that things are back to normal. Just then, Karen Araragi, his elder sister, emerges after her bath, requesting a towel from him. Meanwhile, Koyomi notices her height and realizes that she's considerably shorter than before. He recalls that she used to be the tallest in their group, but what's even more surprising is the altered sound of her voice. Nevertheless, feeling perplexed, Koyomi leaves the bathroom and enters the room of his younger sister, Tsukihi Araragi. As they engage in conversation, he observes that there aren't any unusual or noticeable changes in her appearance or physique. If anything, there's a slight change in the tone of her voice, though not enough to seem unusual. Afterward, Koyomi inquires if she's noticed any significant alterations in Karen's body. She responds negatively and then heads off to take her morning bath. Once she's gone, another astonishing moment unfolds, Yatsugi Ananoki, who had been acting like a doll, unexpectedly begins to converse with him. He notices her unique facial expressions and her dialogue starts to grate on his nerves. This prompts him to leave the house, aiming to avoid a potential argument. Outside, his certainty about something being amiss solidifies. In response, he attempts to summon Shinobu Ashino, a vampire, for assistance but receives no response. He quickly realizes that it's counterproductive to call a vampire into direct sunlight and abandons the effort. This situation uncovers the fact that he had placed a heavy burden on Shinobu when he skipped his graduation ceremony the day before. He acknowledges that he has been leaning on her assistance for the past two days. Drawing from these observations, he arrives at the conclusion that she must be exhausted and taking some time off. Later, he pays a visit to the Kitashura Habai Shrine with the intention of meeting the newly appointed god, Meoi Hachikuji. Meoi greets him with excitement and a touch of eccentricity upon having him as a guest. She even attempts to flirt with Koyomi, but he responds with reluctance and manages to navigate himself out of the situation. As the initial flurry of activity settles down, Koyomi is taken aback when he realizes that Meoi has transformed into an adult, whereas he previously knew her as a 10-year-old girl. Feeling flustered, he directly asks Meoi about her divine status. In response, she affirms that he was the one who turned her into a god just two days ago. Eventually, he proceeds to explain the unfolding events to Meoi, who then comprehends that everyone's defining traits have been reversed. To Koyomi's astonishment, she goes on to reveal that he has somehow entered a mirrored world for an unknown reason. Additionally, she clarifies that it's not a mere illusion but rather a reflection, a complete reversal of left and right. Meoi deduces that Shinobu wouldn't respond to his calls due to the absence of vampires in mirrored worlds, given their lack of reflection. She concludes that the key to returning to his original world is to create a portal. While Koyomi believes this might be impossible without Shinobu, who doesn't exist in this mirrored realm, Meoi surprises him by somehow knowing Shinobu's name. Furthermore, Meoi suggests that not everything has been reversed and that there's still a single path back to his world, enlisting Shinobu to open a portal for him from the other side. In a sudden recollection, Koyomi remembers the cypress bath at Kanbaru's house, known for its magical properties. This realization sparks a new glimmer of hope within him. 
In a nutshell, the Cypress bathtub possessed a mystical quality, capable of revealing an image of a person's destined partner. Although the odds of it being a portal to Koyomi's original world are slim, he deems it worthwhile to investigate. He intends to catch a glimpse of Shinobu's reflection in the water and engage her in conversation. In due course, Koyomi makes his way to Kanbaru's house. Just as he's about to ring the bell, an assailant strikes him with force, sending him sprawling. A rush of fear courses through him when he recognizes Kanbaru transformed into her rainy devil form. Fueled by his panic, he mounts his bicycle and attempts to escape, yet Kanbaru effortlessly catches up with astonishing speed. A tension-filled chase ensues, pushing Koyomi to the brink of danger. His life hangs in the balance until a timely intervention by Black Hinkawa prevents a potentially fatal outcome. She guides him to a nearby park, where he finds respite from the harrowing ordeal. In this moment of respite, Koyomi realizes the true identity of his savior, Black Hinkawa, the counterpart to Tsubasa Hinkawa. Exhausted from the frantic pursuit, he engages in a self-examination of sorts. Amidst the fatigue, a thought takes shape, and Koyomi asks her if this world is inside the mirror. To his dismay, Hinkawa responds that being a denizen of this world, she lacks the capability to furnish him with the sought-after answer. Instead, she offers a word of caution, urging him to steer clear of Kanbaru's abode. Hinkawa unveils a disconcerting truth, that attempting to enter the house would likely result in his demise. Despite this grim warning, Koyomi remains undeterred. He presses for information about the individual who dispatched her to aid him. Once again, she evades his query and recommends that he seek a companion if he really intends to breach the premises. This leaves him perplexed, grappling with more questions than answers. Before he can delve further into their conversation, Hinkawa takes her leave, and Koyomi is left to contemplate the complexity of his predicament. He recognizes that the situation isn't straightforward. Both Kanbaru and Hinkawa have undergone a peculiar transformation, one he's never encountered before. They've become anomalies in this mirrored realm. Interestingly, his sister Tsukihi remains the sole individual unaffected by these changes, standing as an exception in this bewildering enigma. In light of this, Koyomi sets out to reassess the situation and heads to the bookstore. His goal is to peruse the historical records of this world, hoping that delving into a few biographies might unveil the mechanics behind the mirroring of humans. He's optimistic that by flipping through the pages, he can uncover how people in this world underwent their mirrored transformation. However, his efforts yield no meaningful results, leaving him with a sense of frustration and futility. The words within the books have all been reversed, rendering them illegible. Deciphering the meaning of entire sentences becomes a perplexing challenge. Feeling a bit disheartened and unsure of his next steps, Koyomi decides to return home, intending to engage in a thoughtful conversation with Ananoki. Yet, upon his return, a surprise awaits him. Sadachi Oikira warmly greets him. He learns that, in this mirrored world, Sadachi has been living with the Araragi household for a decade. Koyomi's recollection of the oppressive aura he once felt around her contrasts starkly with his current experience, that oppressive feeling has dissipated. Sadachi takes the lead, insisting on sharing a cup of tea with him and subsequently engaging in mathematical puzzles. The encounter adds a layer of complexity to his already baffling journey. Sadachi claims a familial connection, asserting that they've lived together as a family since their elementary school days. This revelation leaves Koyomi in a state of bewilderment, struggling to reconcile this version of reality with his own memories. As time progresses, Koyomi comes to realize that Sadachi is no longer a threat. Their interaction evolves into a series of puzzle games, deepening their bond. Amid their interaction, Sadachi reveals her contentment with her current life, expressing a desire for things to remain unchanged. However, in a moment of vulnerability, as she leans against Koyomi's shoulder, she admits to feeling as though something fundamental is amiss, like a grand illusion. Later, Koyomi sets out to meet Ananoki, only to discover her absence from the room. Still grappling with uncertainty, he opts to return to the shrine to meet Meiwe once more. His hope is to uncover new insights. However, upon arrival, he's met with an unexpected twist. Meiwe has brought Nadiko Sengoku with her. This unexpected development further compounds Koyomi's confusion, leaving him struggling to make sense of the shifting dynamics of this mirrored world. Meiwe discloses that Sengoku is her predecessor, the former god named Kuchainawa. Despite this revelation, Koyomi remains perplexed and continues his quest for answers, this time turning to Sengoku, the snake god. Sengoku shares an ancient perspective, explaining that mirrors have historically served as sacred objects capable of unveiling hidden truths. As their conversation progresses, Sengoku unveils a crucial revelation. The world they find themselves in isn't truly mirrored, 
as none of Koyomi's associates have undergone any form of reversal. The pivotal insight is that everything in this world is inverted, akin to viewing words from the reverse side of a piece of paper. This revelation shatters some of the confusion and provides a crucial piece of the puzzle for Koyomi to piece together the enigmatic nature of this world. Yet, he remains curious about the true distinction between an inverted and a reversed world. For instance, in the case of Hinkawa Tsubasa, the oddity that emerged was the afflicting cat, a classic yaokai entity. This oddity represented an alter ego that she had suppressed until entering this world. From this, Kuyomi deduces that in this reality, underlying personalities and desires manifest outwardly. Even his sister, Karen, exemplifies this concept. Although her disposition is refreshing, she's self-conscious about her height and experiences a discrepancy between the pace of her mental and physical growth. In this world, Karen's manifestation merely mirrors the internal imbalances of her counterpart from another world. Anonoki's case is more straightforward. Her desire to express emotions translates into the mischievous nature displayed in this realm. Mayoi's situation follows a clear trajectory. Having lost her life a decade ago and now existing as a ghost, her aspiration is to savor the essence of adulthood. Similarly, Kanbaru's peculiar situation is readily comprehensible. Her left hand, known as the monkey's paw, holds the power to fulfill the deepest desires of its user. This insight into the distinctive manifestations of individuals in this inverted world contributes to Koyomi's growing understanding of its underlying mechanics. On the flip side, the rainy devil, adorned in a raincoat and boots, symbolized Kanbaru's inner self. The consistent nature of Tsukiha's personality stems from the absence of an underside or alter ego. For Sadachi, a craving for simple happiness underpinned her outwardly sharp and aggressive demeanor. In reality, her core had always been kind-hearted. In contrast, Sengoku, while serving as a deity native to Kitashura Habai Shrine, never possessed the meek, introverted traits attributed to her. In truth, she harbored a desire to exhibit more assertiveness. Having unraveled the hidden layers within each individual, Koyomi reaches a significant conclusion. The incongruities and paradoxes within this world arise due to the externalization of everyone's inner personas. This comprehension provides him with a measure of clarity, allowing him to perceive the landscape he had previously seen only in reverse from a fresh standpoint. Yet, this new understanding prompts a fresh query. As everyone he knows has a counterpart in this world, he becomes curious about the whereabouts of the Koyomi in this mirrored reality. A suspicion takes root, perhaps the Koyomi from this mirrored world has been transported into the real world, effectively switching places with him. This notion stems from a peculiar experience that morning, when he gazed into the mirror, the reflected figure did not mimic his movements and stared back at him, triggering a sense of disquiet within him. Despite his own confusion, Koyomi holds the belief that the Koyomi from the other world is likely grappling with the same bewilderment in a world devoid of paradoxes. As he contemplates these intricacies, a wave of concern washes over him. In a logical sense, when considering the presence of Black Hinkawa and the Rainy Devil, it becomes evident that the mirrored Araragi Koyomi must be none other than his arch-nemesis, Ashino Augi. This unsettling realization raises another pressing worry. Should this hypothesis prove true, the potential exists for Ashino Augi to wreak havoc in the real world, leaving Koyomi filled with nervousness. In response to these concerns, Koyomi resolves to formulate a comprehensive, long-term plan. Later that night, he heads back to his home. After taking a bath, he once again examines the mirror, but to his disappointment, there are no abnormalities to be found. Weighed down by fatigue, he eventually retires to bed, clinging to the hope that, upon awakening, the world will have reverted to its familiar state. Upon entering his room, he discovers a surprising change, an arrangement of bunk beds, with Sadachi occupying the upper bunk. As midnight approaches, Koyomi seizes the opportunity to inquire about mirrors, prompting Sadachi to respond. She divulges that mirrors cannot yield perfect reflections and highlights that the reflectivity of an average mirror hovers around 80%. This deficiency accounts for the slightly blurred appearance of objects within mirrors. With these insights shared, they eventually settle in for the night. However, their repose is disrupted when Anonoki awakens Koyomi. She extends an invitation for him to encounter Shinobu within this world, and he accepts the offer. During their journey, Anonoki discloses a revealing detail. When he conversed with her earlier that day, he instantly sensed an irregularity about the world. Conversely, she also sensed a discordance about him, prompting her to adjust her personality to match his prior perception of her, an adjustment that proved successful. Later on, Anonoki escorts him to an abandoned cram school building, 
previously burned during the prior summer. However, upon reaching the destination, they are met with an unforeseen transformation. The derelict structure has been supplanted by a sprawling eastern castle. Koyomi enters the castle, guided by Anonoki, and discovers that it is now Shinobu's residence. Within its confines, a surprising encounter unfolds. As they venture further, they come face to face with Shinobu herself, Kiss shot a Suraleorian Heartender blade. However, the revelation that follows adds another layer of intrigue. Shinobu is concealed behind a curtain, her true form shrouded as she presents herself in human guise. This unexpected revelation deepens the enigma surrounding their meeting and the nature of this mirrored realm. The pieces of the puzzle finally click together for Koyomi, granting him insight into Anonoki's cryptic words. As a former minion of a vampire, Anonoki used the term devil to refer to Koyomi. Yet, if vampires are absent from this world, their minions should logically not exist either. This leads Koyomi to a pivotal realization. There are no vampires in this world, meaning there is no basis for him to bear the devil label. However, this realization doesn't automatically imply that Shinobu doesn't exist in this realm. Despite the absence of her vampiric identity, 600 years ago, she was a human. Koyomi deduces her former identity as a noble princess who regarded the castle she inhabited as an extension of herself. This revelation unveils Shinobu's existence as a human in the mirrored world, thus confirming it as her underlying persona. With this understanding, Shinobu apologizes to Koyomi for concealing her face and offers a noteworthy insight. The mirrored world's Koyomi is a gentleman. This distinct characterization prompts her to implore Koyomi to provide a detailed account of his current predicament, a request that demonstrates her eagerness to comprehend the complexities of his situation. As they delve deeper into the conversation, combining his account with her own wisdom, Shinobu reaches a significant conclusion. Compared to the mirrored world, the reality he hails from appears intricately orchestrated. This observation underscores the peculiar nature of both realms. Unexpectedly, she discloses her limitation. She lacks the capacity to conjure an otherworldly portal due to her current human form. This revelation adds a layer of complexity to the situation. As the conversation continues, Shinobu advises Koyomi to expeditiously return to his original world, a response he had anticipated. What leaves him truly astounded, however, is his newfound ability to discern her thoughts accurately, an ability that defies explanation. Amidst this revelation, Shinobu delves into the heart of the matter. Koyomi's presence in the mirrored world has a substantial negative impact, triggering a cascade of consequences. His mere existence has disrupted the delicate equilibrium of the mirrored realm. He has inadvertently prompted Anonoki to reshape her personality, and sowed seeds of doubt in Sadachi's perception of her life. Given the realm's inherent paradoxes, Koyomi emerges as a catalyst capable of unearthing these contradictions and thereby destabilizing the balance of this world. This revelation strikes Koyomi with a mixture of bewilderment and realization, underscoring the pivotal role he plays in this intricate web of existence. On the flip side, Koyomi vocalizes his strong desire to return to his original world as swiftly as possible, yet he grapples with the daunting challenge of having no apparent means to achieve this. In response, Shinobu imparts a crucial revelation. The pathway back lies within Kanbaru's bathtub. However, there's a caveat. He must find a suitable partner to facilitate this transition. Amid this discourse, a wave of overwhelming guilt crashes over Koyomi. The realization that his mere presence has catalyzed destruction and turmoil drives him to the brink of despair. In this emotional storm, he develops a distressing urge to harm himself. However, before he can succumb to these emotions, Anonoki intervenes, employing the ultimate rulebook to extract him from Shinobu's presence. Later, Anonoki divulges a critical detail. Extended interactions with Shinobu breed a dangerous desire for death in those who bask in her presence. This truth is the catalyst for Shinobu's concealment behind a curtain. Had Koyomi directly gazed upon her radiance, he would have felt compelled to inflict self-harm, as she occupies the role of a genuine princess in this world. Armed with this insight, Koyomi requests Anonoki's assistance in executing a plan to clandestinely access the Cypress bathtub within Kanbaru's abode. He identifies her as the sole contender capable of confronting the raincoat devil head-on, positioning her as an invaluable ally in his quest to navigate this complex and perilous journey. The subsequent day brings forth a series of peculiar interactions for Koyomi within his own household, particularly with his elder sister Karen. However, undeterred by these odd occurrences, he sets his sights on a definitive resolution. He travels to Kanbaru's house with Anonoki by his side, determined to face the difficulties that await him. A 
Upon their arrival, their intentions are met with immediate hostility as Kanbaru launches an attack. To counter this, Anonoki masterminds a diversionary tactic, affording Koyomi the opportunity to stealthily infiltrate the house. Anonoki's strategy proves successful, enabling Koyomi to reach the Cypress bathtub with remarkable ease. Stripping down in anticipation, he gazes into the water, hoping for the anticipated transformation. However, to his bewilderment, the anticipated change fails to materialize. In the midst of his concentration, an unexpected arrival takes him by surprise. A woman enters the scene. She introduces herself as Tugin, Kanbaru's mother, thrusting Koyomi into a whirlwind of confusion and uncertainty. As To joins Koyomi in the bathtub, her connection becomes apparent. She's the elder sister of Gin Izuko. This connection is further illuminated as she confesses to being the one who left the monkey's paw under Kanbaru's care. Despite her physical absence in the real world, she appears to Koyomi in this mirrored realm. During their conversation, To displays a profound understanding of Koyomi's situation, leaving him astounded. To his surprise, he queries how she's privy to his predicament, but her response is enigmatic. Rushing off the query, she asserts that the specifics of her knowledge are irrelevant. This realization dawns upon Koyomi. To is a prodigious genius who effortlessly grasps the intricacies of his circumstance without the need for verbal confirmation. As their interaction continues, Koyomi finds himself captivated by To's presence, prompting her to engage in playful flirting. She extends an invitation to visit her room, teasingly implying more intimate intentions. Amidst his flustered state, she declares it a joke, transitioning the conversation to his predicament. However, she shatters a belief, unlike his prior understanding, the Cypress bathtub doesn't possess any magical attributes. It functions as a regular tub, merely reflecting a person's mental state. Toe's offer to wash Koyomi's back meets reluctant agreement, a sequence that serves as the backdrop for her revelation. She explains the rationale behind entrusting the monkey's paw to her daughter, Kanbaru, an insight that illuminates the underlying motives driving her actions. In a revealing moment, Toe discloses the intricate connection between the rainy devil and the monkey's paw. It is, in fact, her own alter ego and an embodiment of her underside. She elaborates further, unveiling a unique tradition within the Gein family lineage. Generation after generation, family members specialize in crafting monsters as a means of confronting their inner turmoil. These creatures coexist within them, making them impossible to ignore or suppress. Toe's perspective highlights the diverse approaches taken by her family members to grapple with these inner demons. Continuing her narrative, Toe explains that her sister, Izuko, pursued a different path, seeking to eliminate these inner monsters instead of coexisting with them. This contrast in methodology puzzles her, prompting her to reflect on the motivations behind Izuko's decision. One thing remains clear, Izuko played a role in the creation of Anonoki, an oddity with its own complex origins. With introspection, To unveils the journey she undertook to vanquish her own alter ego, an experience that underscores her inner struggles and vulnerabilities. However, she concedes that her chosen approach may not be the most courageous, revealing her own inherent timidity. To further divulges a critical link, the blood of the Gein family courses through Kanbaru's veins. This familial connection compelled her to bestow a part of the rainy devil upon her daughter, Kanbaru. Yet, To harbors reservations. She doesn't wish for Kanbaru to tread the same path as her mother, fearing the consequences that such a choice might yield. To offers her perspective on Koyomi's past actions, commending his choice to preserve his own alter ego, Oshino Algi, from annihilation. In a striking turn, she makes a deep scratch into his back, leaving an indelible mark. Her parting words carry a weighty charge. She implores him to stand by her daughter's side when the moment necessitates it. With this final pronouncement, To's presence dissipates, leaving Koyomi with a lingering sense of her enigmatic nature. Amidst the aftermath of her departure, Koyomi discerns a significant detail, To lacked reflection. This realization guides his gaze to the bathroom mirror, where he unravels the cryptic message left imprinted on his back, Naetsu High School. Later on, Koyomi reunites with Anonoki and tells her that Tu not having a reflection means that she's dead in the real world. He tells her about his discussion with To, and she gets mad at him for having a bath with a married woman. Anonoki urges Koyomi to reveal the markings on his back, leading to a puzzling discovery. No trace of the writing remains except for a well-defined set of back muscles. This unexpected turn of events leaves him perplexed, as the message he had seen moments ago has inexplicably vanished. In his desperation, he insists that the name of his high school was indeed imprinted on his back. 
Anunoki, showing goodwill, expresses belief in his words, recognizing the bizarre nature of their circumstances. Adjusting their approach in light of this confusion, she suggests an alternative plan. Koyomi proposes they visit his high school together, yet Anunoki proposes a different strategy, splitting up to cover more ground. She clarifies her desire to stay away from Neetsu, and makes a commitment to get in touch with Black Hankawa as a result of the unanswered question of why she chose to save him. Koyomi, reassured by her determination, agrees to this modified plan. They set a rendezvous point three hours later. With the intention of avoiding unnecessary complications, Koyomi opts to return home and don his school uniform. However, his search for the uniform proves futile, it seems to have vanished. Faced with the absence of his uniform, he stumbles upon a surprising discovery within his closet, a girl's uniform, distinctly belonging to Augi. This revelation fuels a sudden realization. His counterpart in this mirrored realm is none other than Oshino Augi. Koyomi wrestles with the decision to wear Augi's uniform to school, ultimately yielding to the choice to put it on. During his journey to school, his contemplation deepens, he observes that his characteristics are gradually aligning with Auga's. This introspection leads him to a significant realization. Instead of his presence adversely affecting the mirrored world, the inverse might be true. The prospect of metamorphosing into Augi fills him with dread, intensifying his commitment to swiftly resolve the enigma at hand. Simultaneously, Anunoki embarks on her own quest to locate Black Hinkawa. Seeking answers at the shrine, she stumbles upon an astonishing scene. In an unexpected turn of events, Meiwe, Sengoku, and a six-year-old Hinkawa are engaged in a shared moment of fellowship, indulging in sake together. This surreal sight leaves Anunoki bewildered, prompting her to inquire about the unfolding scenario. Sengoku, however, asserts that misunderstandings have colored their perception of the situation thus far. Meiwe adds her perspective, claiming that all that remains is for Koyomi to fully grasp the gravity of their circumstances and locate his partner. This, they suggest, will ultimately bring about the resolution they seek. The narrative transitions to high school, where Koyomi ventures into his third-year classroom in search of answers. However, his search yields no results, leaving the room eerily vacant. As he contemplates the situation, a sudden realization dawns on him. His journey to the algae-designed hidden room is motivated by his newly acquired knowledge. Koyomi's suspicions are confirmed inside the hidden chamber, where algae waits for him dressed in a boy's uniform. Initially, Augie teases Koyomi about his choice to wear a female uniform, revealing that she strategically placed it in his closet to play a prank on him. Amidst this lighthearted banter, a moment of realization strikes Koyomi. He comprehends that Augie is the very partner he has been urged to find. This revelation casts a new light on their interactions, sparking curiosity about her role in the twisted realities of the mirrored world. Koyomi wonders whether Augie possesses the answers he seeks about this convoluted reality and she confirms his intuition. In a surprising twist, Augi discloses that she orchestrated Black Hankawa's intervention to save him from death's clutches. Moreover, she shatters the assumption that they inhabit a mirror world. Koyomi's morning mirror gazing didn't transport him to an alternate realm. Instead, it brought fragments from that other world into their own reality. Augi expands on this concept, invoking the properties of mirrors to emphasize her point. She explains that an average mirror reflects only 80% of light, with the remaining 20% absorbed. In a metaphorical sense, Koyomi inadvertently introduced this 20%, a compilation of regrets, insecurities, and underlying facets of everyone's personas, into their world. This unintentional act is the root of the convoluted circumstances they now face. Algi then unveils a critical detail. This act inadvertently ensnared her within the confines of the classroom rendering her unable to assist him sooner. In the midst of their conversation, Augie imparts a revelation. Hankawa remains in the town, despite having supposedly departed the country, driven by the regret of not cultivating a friendship with Koyomi. This insight sheds light on the intricacies of the mirrored world, intertwining the emotions and unfulfilled desires of its inhabitants. Amidst this realization, another truth crystallizes for Koyomi. His absence of a counterpart in this world is not due to its absence, but rather because he never left this world. To begin with, Augie further elucidates his position, unveiling his status as the master of an immensely potent vampire. This revelation ushers in a rush of complex emotions within Koyomi, accompanied by a profound sense of guilt. In an earnest plea, Koyomi implores Augie for a solution to restore normalcy. Initially, Augie playfully dismisses his request, but her demeanor shifts, and she entrusts him with a black mirror, an artifact that absorbs 100% of light. 
This mirror carries a crucial purpose, Koyomi must transport it to Kitashura Habai Shrine, where the 20% fragment of the other world that he inadvertently introduced will be absorbed, potentially restoring equilibrium. However, Augie underscores the gravity of his task. Once the mirror turns white, he must replace it. With these instructions in mind, the complexity of their situation solidifies, and Koyomi confronts a final, lingering question. How and why did he bring forth the regrets of this world into his own? Augie guides Koyomi towards the path of understanding, urging him to delve deep into his thoughts to uncover the root of their intricate predicament. As he traverses the labyrinth of his memories, a pivotal moment surfaces, the day after his graduation. On that day, he grappled with his reluctance to bid farewell to his high school self, clinging to memories and experiences that defined him. Lingering regrets lay deep inside his heart, resisting the embrace of new beginnings. In this struggle to hold on to the past, Koyomi inadvertently summoned the traces of everyone else's regrets, binding them to their reality. In the aftermath of this realization, equilibrium is restored, and the pieces of their complex puzzle fall into place. Koyomi's path intersects with that of Hitagi Senjogahara. In a sincere conversation, he discloses that in the past, he lacked the courage to confront her mirrored counterpart, leaving that dimension unexplored. However, he boldly asserts that he doesn't have any regrets concerning Hitagi, as his affection for her is deep-rooted, shaping his desire to share his life with her. With honesty, Koyomi recounts the chronicle of his journey to Hitagi, allowing the narrative to seamlessly intertwine their lives. Amidst this dialogue, they find themselves halted at a traffic light, a symbolic pause that mirrors their present state of equilibrium. In the midst of their conversation, Koyomi reflects on a metaphor that conveys his internal dilemma, a traffic light intersection, where the choice of which foot to move forward with upon the green signal becomes a powerful analogy. He articulates the struggle of overthinking and how it leads to hesitation that compounds as choices become apparent. This tendency to overanalyze often paralyzes people and prevents them from moving forward. Itagi laughs in response and offers a straightforward yet profound solution to this uncertainty. She leaps forward as the light turns green, pushing off with both feet in a physical illustration of the advice she has just given. She illustrates an important lesson in this action. The best course of action is to follow her lead and remain by her side as a loyal companion when faced with uncertainty about the future. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed our video, give us a thumbs up and please subscribe to our YouTube channel for more amazing content.